TCU 38, Kansas State 28. Here's what I wrote down. Adrian Martinez got hurt. Will Howard got hurt, and then he got put back in late. TCU keeps finding ways to survive. That's what I put down. Let's pull it up. Let's see what's going on. TCU, their win probability was good, and then it was bad, and then it was good. Really, really good. Went down 28-10 to 10 in this ballgame. Will Howard has, like, that TCU killing gene for whatever reason. Like, he was having a complete monster day. Absolute monster day. Looking at the uh, looking at the stats on him, 13 out of 20, 225 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. He ran the ball nine times for 31 yards. Will Howard was awesome. Max Duggan was better. 17 out of 26, 280, three touchdowns. Uh, he ran 15 times for 13 yards, so that Kansas State defense was really good. Uh, really good at shutting him down. They did not shout, uh, shut down Kendra Miller. 29 carries, 153 yards, two touchdowns. TCU is able to find ways to win games, and they take advantage of opportunities just over and over and over again. You'll get the play-by-play here, uh, which this is over at ESPN in case anybody didn't see that thing in the top left corner. But you look at what they were able to do. TCU came out, scored a touchdown, and then it's K-State touchdown, TCU field goal. K-State touchdown, TCU punt. K-State touchdown, TCU punt. K-State touchdown, TCU ball over on downs. That was the first half. And then, of course, well, excuse me, you did have that TCU drive late, t- uh, 10 plays, 91 yards. So 28-17 at the half, and then TCU comes out. Touchdown, K-State missed field goal. Touchdown, K-State interception. TCU ball over on downs, which, eh, it's weird spot there. That was a weird spot. We'll, we'll admit, and it was two straight plays where Duggan got just a bad spot from the refs. But regardless... Kansas State comes out on the next drive, and I, I don't understand why you would do this. You've got fourth and one at your own 30, and you're only down by three with 14 minutes left in the ball game. If you're Chris Kleiman, I understand that you need some kind of momentum, but that does not feel like the place to get it done unless you just believe that your, your team is gassed and you cannot afford to give up another possession. And maybe that was the case. I mean, because they had, TCU had had a ton of success already. They'd already come back and gotten the lead. So maybe they you just didn't believe that your defense could actually hold them. But, you know, you, you go for it there, you don't get it, and that gives TCU a four-play, 30-yard drive to take a 10-point lead. Humphrey jumps in. TCU has extreme speed and conditioning. See the early Colorado game. Frogs played the, uh, play like crap. Halfway through the second half, the buffs gassed out. Now TCU has rhythm and belief on top of it. That's 100% true. That's 100%. This team is super fast. Uh, so I talked with, uh, well, I'll just say, I talked with a lot of people uh, about the fact that TCU still has one of the most talented rosters in the Big 12 and, and the most talented roster on paper that they have ever had. And that's why everybody couldn't figure out why Gary Patterson was not being successful with this team. Because recruiting-wise, it's the best team that they have ever assembled. No, obviously that was with Zach Evans, et cetera, et cetera. But they still got a bunch of guys. They were not able to really do anything with that roster. And then Sonny Dykes comes in with effectively the same team and is doing this. Like, it's amazing what you can do. With, which, by the way, Joe Gillespie, like that defense, it's you give him time to adjust, and it is done. So they come out and they score touchdowns on... Uh, let's see, the second drive, third drive, fourth drive, fifth drive. So five drives in the first half, and they score four touchdowns, and he adjusts, and they do not score again after that. Now, Adrian Martinez, uh, Will Howard, et cetera. Uh, yeah, zone six is the third best roster in the Big 12. Yeah, it really is. Like, this is a, a really, really good team. And I do wonder when the shoe is going to fall, though, uh, because I don't know that they can keep doing this. They just they cannot keep doing it. Like, it's going to come back to earth eventually. Uh, by the way, on the screen, this is GameOnPaper.com. Green is good. Purple is bad. You had several purples for Kansas State. 
bottom right there. Oh yeah, Humphrey jumps in and said behind who? It's behind Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, and uh, no, the Oklahoma roster doesn't look great right now, but recruiting wise, it's still a really talented roster. They just hadn't been able to figure out how to make it all gel in the first year. So not, it's not a roster that was built for Venables, I believe. But this TCU roster was absolutely built for somebody like Sonny Dykes. A hundred percent. I mean, just over and over and over again. Uh, you look at the scrimmage plays, you look at just all of these things, and yeah, TCU got it done when they needed to. Uh, 11% explosive plays for TCU, uh, 9% for Kansas State. All kinds of different numbers here point to TCU just had a, a way better overall game. Total EPA in the game, TCU 14.15, Kansas State negative 2.38, and yet it was close. Like, it's situationally, this was perfect for Kansas State coming off of a bye and not great for TCU, who has just been through a gauntlet, absolute gauntlet. Uh, everybody's talking about TCU in a playoff berth and all that. Um, let, me, let me show you. I know they're 7-0, but look at the schedule. At West Virginia, Morgantown ain't no joke. At Texas, or excuse me, Texas Tech at home, at Texas, at Baylor, Iowa State. They could lose to any of those teams. Any of them. So it, it's something to pay attention to, the fact that they had their bye week in week three and now have to play all of the Big 12 slate with no bye. I mean, that is <laughs> it's so brutal. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what they end up doing. Next week, 11 a.m. game, Central Time, at West Virginia. Yeah, and I know West Virginia looked like crap against Texas Tech. We're not going to talk about that one, but man, uh, just rough. Um, yeah, TCU, tough tough road stretch, Texas and Baylor. Uh, I'm telling you, do not sleep on Morgantown. That team, when they're not making mistakes, like, they're all right. It's just that you can always kind of count on mistakes. So, cheers to TCU for getting yet another one. And they'll be moving up in the rankings, I would almost imagine. I would almost guarantee Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.